In this guide, we are going to fill out the rest of our form here, and we're going to also populate a full, uh, the entire proposal all in real time. So I'm going to pull in a proposal. So these, this is a full proposal that the freelancers can send to their customers, and it has all of the items kind of inside of here. So we're going to remove some of the text and it's going to be replaced dynamically as the freelancers are entering their form into the information. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to come down into our proposal new component and inside of this div, I'm going to put all of this code. Let's format it really quick and I'm also going to slide this down so that we can see this all on the page. So this is going to be all nested in the same div, but we're going to create paragraph tags just so it kind of looks better. So I'm going to, at the end of each one of these paragraphs, I'm going to put a paragraph tag. And then we'll put one at the beginning. And I'm also going to give us some more room here. So uh, the way you can do that is inside of Sublime Text, go to View, and in Layouts, you can go Single, which is what it's at right now, or you could go down to uh, Rows 2, which is where we were before, and you have another a number of other ones. And if you memorize the keyboard shortcuts, it can make it a lot easier to work with your system. Okay, now that we have that, let's come down and we're going to copy these paragraph tags as well. And I'm going to add these to the front of each one of these items. And now let's indent it for a good measure. So if I hit save, you can see that we have these items here. And what I want is I want to get rid of the hard coded values and I want to instead use the ones that are going to be coming in from the form. So the very first spot we could do that is here in customer name. We can give our double curly brackets and inside of this we can just bring in our ng model. So in this case it's proposal customer. So as you can see this is gone now, but as the, as the freelancer is going to be typing this in, it's automatically going to start filling out his entire proposal, which will be really cool. So let's see where else this needs to work. We have the customer name, and there's nothing else inside the first paragraph that needs to be touched. And the second one, you see where it says, I will be utilizing Ruby on Rails, Angular, and Postgres SQL, and a number of other tools. Right here, I'm going to get rid of that text, and this is going to be our tools section. So right here, we're going to replace all of this with proposal tools. And if I hit save, all it's going to do is get rid of the list of tools. It's just going to be empty space. But then when you start typing this into the form, it's going to autofill it. Next one we're going to look at is these other ones. So ensuring that you're fully informed. Okay, that one's not going to change. To accomplish the project and meet the requirements we discussed, I'm estimating that will take 80 hours. Okay, so this 80 hours... This is going to be replaced by our hours. And let's take a look at our proposal. We have estimated hours right here. So this is going to be estimated hours in development time to complete. The project should take around nine weeks. So right here, these are our estimated weeks. I believe our item is weeks to complete. To complete and with my hourly rate of 120, so this 120 is going to be that hourly rate value, which is just hourly underscore rate. Uh, the estimated total will be 9,000. So this one's a cool one because this one we're actually going to process some math to make this possible. So the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to copy all of this. And we're going to be able to generate the total by multiplying the hourly rate by the estimated hours. So that's going to be proposal.hourlyrate 
times, which uses asterisks, proposal.estimated hours. And so this is going to generate that. And if you hit save, everything is here. Now it does give us a little, not a number, but that's gonna be fixed as soon as we start entering text in and start entering those items in. So now that we have that all in place, let's start filling out our form value. So uh, this is a form group. So we're gonna create a, another form group here. And one thing that I always find helpful when I'm doing this kind of development is either having copying and pasting something like this over, or you can also just come here and bring the values here. So this way we can kind of see all of this on one screen, which makes it a little bit easier. So we're not going to fill in the ID. Uh, what? we can actually yeah let's fill an ID right now but eventually this is going to come in from the API and we're not going to worry about this at all um, but uh, for right now we, we can decide on that later uh, but that's one of the nice things about being optional we don't have to worry about it so we have customer name next one's going to be portfolio URL so this one is going to be let's change the label to portfolio URL and then we have to change each spot where it says customer. We need to change that to portfolio URL. Oop. Looks like we got one wrong selector here. Sometimes Sublime Text doesn't like to play nicely, especially when I'm giving a screencast, which is always fun. There you go. Okay, so we're just having some issues with, for some reason, it's not copying and pasting over here. We'll give it one more try, and then I'll just do it manually. There we go. Fifth time's a charm. Okay, so we have our portfolio URL right here. And this is pretty neat because look what we can do on this one. We can say, you know, whatever is typed in here, and then we can type in the name. So we could say like devcamp.com. Now, as you can tell, nothing's getting populated here. And that's because what we actually want on this is to have on this first paragraph, you see where it says, check out some of my past projects here. We want here to be a link that has the portfolio URL inside of it, which I think is kind of a neat way of doing it. So the way that we can accomplish this is by coming down here and we're gonna create an A tag. And in the A tag, we're going to pass in an href. And inside of this href, we can use the same double curly brackets and we'll put the portfolio URL. Just make sure you also do proposal dot or else that's not gonna work. And then inside of here, we're gonna have the text and then we'll close off the A tag. Now if I hit save, now you can see that this is a full link. So now if I click this, then you can see here that it didn't work. So what exactly is the problem? Let's come back. Now I'm going to right click on here, hit inspect, and we'll see what is going on with it. As you can see, we're not getting a, our value overridden. So all it's doing is it's setting this value. Oh, like it probably helped to actually type something in. So here I'm going to say devcamp.com. And now if I click on it, now it works. So it just needed to be refreshed for some reason. Okay, so that, that's all working now. So all we just to review, all we did there is we created an A tag that has a href inside of it, and then we are sliding in this URL as the href. So this is just going to slide it in. The text won't change, but the values inside of it. And if you noticed, when I clicked inspect, Notice how this happens in real time. So pay attention to this line in the inspector as I start typing this in. So as I start saying devcamp.com, notice how that's actually updating all in real time. So we are setting this attribute here, uh, even though it wasn't set when the page originally loaded. And you can also see some other things that are here that we don't actually have in our code. 
you have this NG Reflect HREF, and that is something that's provided by Angular. It's a attribute in Angular that's being kind of slid in that we don't have to do anything with, but it's using it so that uh, so that we can get this kind of kind of live behavior. So that is our portfolio URL. Looking down, we have the next one is our tools. So let's create another form group. This one is going to be tools. And we'll say tools that you'll use on the project. And then inside of this, instead of portfolio URL, select each one of those and we'll call them tools. Oh, and one thing that we did have that was kind of messy, uh, just bad practice here, we need to get rid of our placeholder for the portfolio URL. And our placeholder here, we can say something like yeah, Ruby on Rails, Angular, etc. Just so the developer, the freelancer, has a good idea on what's going to be used here. Now if I hit save, this is going to be updated. And pay attention to some of the things that are happening. So uh, right here in this second paragraph, we have to successfully build out the application I'll be utilizing. This is where this text is going to go. So here, if I say that I'm going to be using .NET for some reason, uh, I'll say .NET, ASP, C Sharp, things like that. See how it's all updating right here. And I like this because this is pretty cool. This means that any kind of freelancer or developer can use this and they can simply enter in a few items and a full proposal is generated for them. So that Let's keep on, that's done. Let's keep on moving down the line. Next one is going to be estimated hours. Now, estimated hours, we don't want a placeholder. And this one is going to be here. We'll just put estimated hours. Once we start styling the form, we will probably update these labels to be a little bit more descriptive. This is going to be of type number. And then in here, we're going to change this to be estimated hours. Okay, and one thing I want to point out here, and I just read yesterday a great blog post from ThoughtBot, and they were talking about some very important things that developers sometimes skip over when it comes to building forms, and one of them is neglecting to update this type. So when you have a HTML5 form, then each one of your inputs has a type. And if you're lazy, then you may just keep the type at text. But what that does, if I hit save here, is you can't really tell usually with a normal form what estimated hours is. However, when it comes to using this on tablets or smartphones, then having a type number actually comes in pretty handy. Because now look at this. Here you see that how we can actually use these little uh, kind of number pickers and watch what's happening. Let me get rid of this. Watch what's happening down here. It says I'm estimating that it will take and then we have this kind of blank spot here. If I come and start typing this, look at that. We're able to increment the value of the estimated hours just by clicking right here. And this may or may not be something that you would use in a browser. However, on smartphones and tablets, this can be very handy. So make sure you're always updating your type. Okay, moving down the line, we, now that we have our form group for estimated hours, the next one's going to be hourly rate. And this one is going to be, let's see, estimated hours. hourly rate and this one is also of type number so that's all we should have to do on there and just for the sake of time we'll keep on moving down the line we'll test them out when they're done we're just about done with it so weeks to complete is the next one this will be of type number as well And then the last one is going to be client email. 
because what I'm envisioning for this is in, I want to have our API. So when we tie in, we create our Rails microservice. I want the proposal microservice to, on the Rails side, to not only store a record of all the proposals, but I also want them to actually, the Rails side, to email a link to the client. And so this is where we can have a client email so that this will be sent along with the, whenever we go and create a proposal. This will send it up to the Rails server and then the client can be emailed from there. So we'll say client email and we can even put in here something we can put like a, a emphasis tag that says optional. And because it's optional I'm going to get rid of this required statement here and this is going to be of not type text this is going to be of type email which is also very important because we get some built-in validators uh, because of this and I have weeks to complete it's going to be switched up and we're going to say client email if I hit save all of this is working and now let's actually see if our whole system is working so let's create a full customer so we're going to say customer names google here we'll say devcamp.com tools that we're going to use we'll say rails postgres and that looks good estimated hours Let, on this one let's say the estimated hours are going to be 80 so we have 80 hours and then we have an hourly rate let's say of 120 hours weeks to complete we can put at 12 client email this isn't going to update anything on the page but i'll still put you know something on there Okay, so all of this is done. Now, as you can see, we now have a fully filled out proposal and it all happened in real time. We didn't even have to you know, press submit or anything like that, which I think is a really neat way of doing this. And additionally, look at our generator here. So not only is this generating the proposal and filling in the information, but our calculation here, if you notice, we never created a total, but because of what we did here when we said hourly rate times estimated hours, what, uh, what Angular did is it combined both of those, multiplied them, and now we have 9,600. And 9,600 is our hours times our hourly rate. So we're able to generate the full proposal just like that, which I think is pretty amazing. And this is something that you'll see in a lot of new modern development in modern applications is the ability to update different elements on the page all in real time without even having to communicate with the server. So that was a little bit longer of a guide, but I think it was really important to finish out this entire system here. And in the next few guides, we're going to start building out some of the other components that you need in order to have a fully functional component.